Well, howdy, you flea-bitten varmints. Today, we're going to look at the serial monitor output for an eye spindle on a program called Putty. Yee-haw! Thanks for joining us today. Today, we're going to be taking a look at Putty. I'm going to show you how to download and install it on Windows. We're going to connect an eye spindle up to it. We're going to view and save the output, and I'm also going to give away the Jeffrey 2.1 printed circuit board at some point in this video. Stay tuned. Welcome to Open Source Distilling, where time-honored tradition meets modern-day technology. Today, we're going to be downloading PuTTY and connecting that up to an eye spindle so we can see the output of the serial monitor on the eye spindle itself. So the first thing we need to do is download and install PuTTY. So we can go over to PuTTY.org or we can just search Google for PuTTY. I'm selecting the 64-bit Windows installer. When I'm installing PuTTY, I'm just going to go ahead and accept all defaults. When PuTTY's done installing, let's go ahead and plug the eye spindle in. It needs to be plugged in via a USB cable, but not just any power cable. It needs to actually be a data cable, and there is a difference. I had to try many different cables in my house until I found a data cable that worked. I then labeled it as the eye spindle cable. My eye spindles have the diodes removed, so when I plug this in, I actually have to turn the eye spindle on. If your diode is not removed, you need to take out your battery first just to be safe before plugging in the eye spindle and your eye spindle can be turned off. As I've said before, it's always recommended to remove the diodes from the eye spindles as a safety measure. If the D1 Mini is plugged in via the USB cable and the battery is attached and the diode is still there, you run the risk of damaging the lithium ion battery and possibly starting a fire. When everything's good to go, we'll go ahead and launch PuTTY. I hit the serial radio button and I press open and as you can see, I get an error message. So what I'm going to do is go to my computer, right click and go manage. From there, I select the Device Manager and expand the Port section. We can see that the CH340 chip is connected on COM port number 3. So I come back to PuTTY and update the serial line. I press Open, and what do I get on the screen? A whole bunch of junk. I'll press reset on the eye spindle, and you can see these lines coming out that really don't mean anything whatsoever. The issue is that we have to update the speed field to 115200. So I press open on PuTTY, and I get this window popping up. I'll hit the reset button on the eye spindle, and you can see this screen populating with data. Now there is some private information in the serial monitor window. Things like your Wi-Fi network and your passkey, uh, also like your UbiDots token and a whole bunch of other stuff from the eye spindle. So you just want to be careful about what you share with people online. And if you're going to like share your, your serial monitor log, maybe take out some of those parameters before you post it on the internet. To copy the contents of the window, you can right click on the menu bar of PuTTY and select copy all to clipboard, or you can right click in the black area by uh, holding control first. So control right click will get you this menu up on the screen. You can then paste this into a notepad or an email or an online forum. So at this point, you might be thinking, big whoop, what's the serial monitor really going to do for me? Well, if you're having any sort of issues, it's going to show you what's going on behind the scenes and hopefully give you some clues to what the cause is. I'll show you a real-time example. On the left, we have a serial monitor in PuTTY, and on the right, we have an eye spindle access point. You can see as we connect and start clicking on menu items, the serial monitor updates. When we head over to the configuration page and update the unit temperature to Fahrenheit and press save, you can see all sorts of activity happening on the serial monitor. 
And I also want to mention that we can save the connection inside of PuTTY so we don't have to fill that information in each time. So we can give the session a name and save the session for later use, but please be aware that depending on how things get plugged into your computer, that the COM port may change in the future. Serial monitors don't always tell the full story. In the description down below, I'll leave a link to my blog post where we talk a little bit about a uh, serial monitor that says corruption in a configuration file, but really it's nothing to worry about. Uh, once we save the configuration page, that message just goes away. So sometimes things sound scary, but they're really not scary at all. With your help, I would like to start collecting these serial monitor logs. The idea being that if you have a bad temperature probe, for example, that you should get a particular sort of serial monitor output, and we should be able to use that for people to identify when their uh, temp probes uh, are bad as well. Hopefully we can build a database that people will find useful. If you would like to be entered in a draw to win the Jeffrey 2.1 printed circuit board, leave a message in the comments down below, and it doesn't matter what you say, what you do, Say boogie to boo. In summary, we downloaded and installed PuTTY. We connected up some iSchwindles and we talked a little tiny bit about how not all error messages are bad messages. We also spoke about building up a database or lookup table for serial monitor error messages. And we gave away the Jeffrey printed circuit board. Next time you go through McDonald's drive through and they ask you, do you want fries with that? You say no, ma'am. Just give me more of that open source distilling.com.